Well, hello, boys and girls. Here we are again at When We Feel Like It O'Clock, and I'm Pearl Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom, as you already know, because you clicked on here and you want to watch it, so you should know that by now. Actually, everybody should know that by now. Everybody in the land knows it. Um, so we did, uh, the three of us, Steel from Steel Flyers. The professor, Joe Bork, and I did a uh, video that's on um, Sport Fanatic, that's PH News, on the YouTube there. You search Sport Fanatic News. And we did a free agent best of the rest uh, video. It's on the long side, but it's worth every minute. I'd highly recommend you check it out. And we did talk about the person I'm talking about today, which uh, a free agent that we're talking about today. Well, we talked about all kinds of other free agents and where they might go and which team can pick them up and uh, all of those sort of things like that. So I'd highly check it out. That's uh, Sport Fanatic PH with the PH Fanatic News. Go to it after this video, directly after this video, we, we go there, right? Right, there we go. Okay, anyways, I got my, uh, I, the, uh, the, we are having some bad weather here in Edmonton, so if you haven't got your uh, Pearls of Wisdom necklace for your subscribing, and thank you for all that are subscribing, you're keeping Hernandez and Melissa very busy in the Pearlocopter, going out there and sending them all to you. Um, yeah, so it's a little bit delayed though now because we're having a little bit of uh, inclement weather here in the Edmonton, Alberta region. So uh, the Perlocopters are having a little problems getting off the ground. Anyways, that's uh, so you know. We got letters again. Uh, Renita, Renita Perswigan. Hope I said that right. Renita Perswigan from um, Oxford, New British Columbia, or no, not British Columbia, Britain, New England, no, New England, New England, Oxford, New England, it's from, it's from, uh, that's in the United States, uh, <laughs> anyways, she's really wondering if Boston's going to go and get somebody like Hoffman, well, uh, Boston wasn't really in my, the, the teams here I was talking about, but the answer is, uh, I think they're a little bit too, they'd have to clear up a little too much room for that to happen, my friend. Uh, but um, it's something to think about. Maybe I'll look at it anyways. Let's look at it anyways. Why not? At the end of this video, just so watch to the end, we'll pop up Boston and see if maybe Boston can pick up a Hoffman. Uh, thank you for that. But that's who we're talking about today. We're talking about Hoffman and where he may go. So you know. And uh, Murich Swar Swarovic, Mur Murich Swarovic from Slovakia asking the same sort of question. Where's Hoffman going to go? They're all a flutter. Everybody's all a flutter. So send your letters. We, we go down to the mailroom every morning. Guido goes down there, grabs the mail sack, pours it all over the letter table. And uh, we read all the letters and we love it. And there's much frolic. We do the Perlo dance, as you know. And uh, it's, uh, it's, it's quite the event. We enjoy it. So please send all your letters. So let's get into the, uh, by the way, Steel, the one that you're going to watch the video after this, Steel. He's from the steelflyers.com and in www.steelflyers.com. A great website as it is, him and his wife do podcasts on all sports, but it's going to be even greater. It's going to be the finest web sports website in the land. Keep that in your mind. It's going to be fantastic. All right, here we go. Hoffman, as you can see up here right away, I have our, uh, this is the rumor, big rumor, has been going on for quite some time that the Montreal Canadiens are interested in Hoffman. Now, I don't know if this rumor is as strong as it was before, but I'm still hearing it, so I thought I would look it up. And let's look at the possibilities that that is the case. Uh, first of all, uh, let's go to... I, I got this 
let's go to uh, their cap space because that's the most important thing in the land right now, isn't it? Cap space, cap space. Ooh, that's a paltry looking little cap space there, isn't it? It's only got six numbers in it. So they have did a pretty good job of adding cap space with Josh Anderson, who is, whoa, we've talked about that, haven't we? That could be, uh, woof, could be difficult. <laughs> Talk about risk reward, uh, taking a gamble there. And of course, um, the pickup also of Tyler Toffoli, which was a pretty reasonable contract. Uh, they have filled themselves up pretty darn good here. Um, so if they're really going to still go for Hoffman, they could do it. You're allowed to go $10 million off the cap. Let's go over to their depth chart, though, and see if it really makes much sense for them. They have Thomas Tatar. I think they would have to move Thomas Tatar in his five and a half or whatever million it is. We just looked at it. Uh, in order to have this happen, which is not impossible. There are teams out there that might do that, but are you really getting more value from a Thomas Tatar than you are from a Hoffman? I say maybe not so much. Uh, look at it, he's, he's plotting usually around 22, 25, 61 points, almost a point a game last year. Hoffman is a pure scorer, and yes, they do need that, but he doesn't, generally doesn't come close to a point a game. I think it would be kind of illogical. Now, a guy that they could, has been, they've been talking about trading for a long time, is Jonathan Drouin. That's a possibility as well. Jonathan Drouin's making five and a half. Oh, by the way, Tatar's making 4.8. Uh, I could see that. Trading Drouin or something of that nature. The issue I have with this is they added so much already. You're going into a not possible, they're saying possible shortened season, but I have a feeling they're going to be playing 82 games. Going into a condensed season, though, where there's likely not going to be a lot of practice time and having a complete turnaround of, your, of, a, of a team's roster is probably not very advisable. So... My leaning is here is they're done. They're done. Uh, they may go, you know, depending if Josh Anderson gets injured again or something like that, they may look at adding later. But I have a feeling that they're done with everything that they're going to do there in Montreal. So I think that rumor, although interesting and understandable because they do need a pure shooter in this lineup, they thought Jonathan Drouin was going to be that. But so far, he really hasn't been uh exactly what they've been looking for in that capacity uh 18 goals last year and only 53 points he's never scored more than 21 goals in the season he's, he just hasn't turned out to be what was projected when he was drafted so i could see them trying to make a move like that and then uh doing uh, but like i said I, I think that's just a little too much moving around in a season such as this so i'm taking montreal off the rumor chart, I'll call up, uh, actually, I don't need to call him up. Bergevin, I know you're watching, because who wouldn't be watching this, right? Everybody's watching this. Uh, you. Uh, so if you were thinking about it, now you know you're not going to do that. Okay, let's go to <laughs> the Colorado Avalanche, who's another one pretty much rumored in everything. And the reason why the Colorado Avalanche are rumored in everything is this wonderful number here. Uh, they have still $6 million in cap space and one of the deepest rosters in the land. Not to mention they got, they picked up Saad from Chicago, but Saad's going to be a free agent next year. He doesn't work out? Okay, bye. Uh, Atlanta Skog, they're going to re-up. Uh, so Calvert's coming off. They got people coming off next year. Uh, and... I mean, they can load up. They really could load up. There's guys that they could dump off if they have to, if they wanted to bring on a guy like that. Um, they could find a home for Bellamar or Valerie Nichuskin, who probably is going to be uh, Seattle fodder uh, for the expansion draft next year. They have guys that they're probably going to need to trade away in that regard anyways. But with that in mind, uh, let's go to their depth chart. Adding a guy like Hoffman, would it then again add another player off 
that they would have to either remove or give up to expansion for free. So Hoffman, they signed Andre Barakowski for five millions for only two years. Brilliant signing, puts him into free agency. They can choose what they want to do from there. Uh, Barakowski's got a great shot, but maybe not the best two-way player. Uh, so they could say, okay, we don't know what's going to happen to Barakowski, so we're going to bring him in bring Hoffman in here for six million on a one year or something like that. He's been talking a lot about just doing a one year contract because of the environment out there for giving long contracts is not very good. So they could do that. And then uh, they'd be set up to have Landis Gog on the left here, Burakowski, and they could have Hoffman playing with JT Comber, Comfer, uh, Jonas Donskoy, um, and uh, bring Tyson Jost down here to the fourth and have like a ridiculously deep team. My gosh, with a ridiculously deep team. Um, the problem is, is they also have to sign Taves that they just picked up from, from the island with that $6 million. So it's going to get a little dicey is what I'm trying to say. They could move Ian Cole uh, to somebody if they can find somebody that's willing to take that 4.25 million to make up room. I just think that's a lot of movement to do to pick up a guy for one year and it doesn't sound like something that Sackick usually does. They also have a lot of players that can come up and play this year that I think they want to give a shot to. Um, and that's the other reason why I think that this possibly may not be something that he'd be willing to do. Uh, Sakic is something is someone who likes to give his young players shots throughout the season. Uh, and uh, I think that that likely is what he's going to do rather than putting himself in not cap hell, but difficult cap situation on a player who may or may not gel with the team. So that's what I'm saying about that. Uh, I think it's unlikely is what I'm trying to say. They have Alex Newhook, who could be ready. He's 19 years old, probably going to go back to college. Um, who else did they have here? Uh, Nikolai Kovalenko has been looking good. They want to give him a shot. On defense, they have Bowen Byram and, and guys like that. I just think that that's generally the way Sackick works. I don't think he's going to overload his lineup like that to... Uh, and put himself in a cap position where if something happens where the team's not gelling, he doesn't have any room to make some moves during the regular season. That's just not a sackic thing to do. So I'm taking Colorado off of Joe. You know, you might have been thinking about this. I'm sure you've been kind of having sleepless nights. And I know you're watching Joe Sackick. So now you know what to do. You're not going to do that, right? Right. Okay, let's go to the Columbus Blue Jackets. This is a big rumor, the Columbus Blue Jackets going after Hoffman, which makes a lot of sense uh, because they had problems scoring in the offseason. There's, no, uh, there's no doubt about that in the offseason. Did I say offseason, boys and girls? <laughs> in the playoffs and in the regular season, actually. But especially in the playoffs, they had difficult scoring, and they certainly uh, make sense after losing Panarin and uh, Duchesne and all of that. Now they got to sign Eric Dubois, which is big. And uh, I should have had this up on the cap space thing right away, but let's go down to the cap space. And we have 12 million in projected cap space. They have to sign Dubois, who I don't know. Uh, I think they're going to try to give a bridge contract to. Now there's something very important here. Brandon Dubinsky is injured and I think he's going to be injured for life. I think his career is pretty much over. It's been a difficult ride for him. Uh, he's just too banged up. Uh, it's been a, he's been a warrior and it's affected his body and I think it's over. So that during the regular season that would give him another six million um, to work with and they can go over the cap now so they really don't have to move around all that much to get a guy like Hoffman. So let's look at their depth chart. If I haven't forgot anybody else they got a sign here, have I? 
Uh, oh, yeah, Gavrikov is another one. So Luke Dubois, who I think they'll do a bridge deal, maybe a two-year, try to make it like four and a half, five million, something left, maybe five million for two years. Uh, Gavrikov, they can, as, as good as Gavrikov was, I'm sure he's not going to get much more than three million. So with Dubinsky being off the books, and the fact that they had 12 million, that's about 8 million. They've still got a lot of space to add somebody like Hoffman. Let's look at their depth chart. Liam Foudy played excellent in the playoffs. If they don't get Hoffman, it's not horrible to give this kid every chance to be the best he can be here in this role. Uh, then we have Nick Felino, who Honestly, at this stage of his career, at 32 years old, he's been he's been uh, uh, going down the points in the points every year. I I do believe he had 51 in 2017, and then it's been 33, 35, 31. You see, kind of he's kind of set himself up to about a 30 point player now. Not somebody that I overly like having on a, on the second line. Maybe somebody down here. This fellow, Gustav Nyquist, was supposed to be up here. But he has been not really, it's funny, they, they say he's been disappointing, but he really hasn't been any more disappointing than he has anywhere else. It was the one contract that they made that I was a little suspect about was Gustav Nyquist. So um, that you can leave Gustav Nyquist there, and Nick Foligno could play down here. Eric Robinson would go on the, and you'd have Felino, Koivu, and Gregorenko, who is going to be really interesting to see how he turns out, by the way. He was drafted by Buffalo in the first round, went back to the KHL, and now this brilliant Kekalainen, the manager of Columbus, has decided that this guy can play and brought him in. It's going to be really interesting to see where he goes. He might end up here being where Nash is. Anyways, if you had Felino, Koivu, and Gregorenko or Riley Nash, that might be one of the best fourth lines in the league. That would be fantastic. And then, of course, we would put Hoffman here in Nick Felino's spot, and you have Hoffman, Domi, and Atkinson. Love it. That is fantastic. Either that or you bring Foudy down here. I like Foudy up here. I like Foudy with Dubois and Bjorkstrand. I like that line. Speed, Bjorkstrand's a shooter. Dubois is a two-way guy that can help Foudy become a two-way guy. And I like putting Hoffman here. This is something I could definitely see doing. I could definitely see Columbus taking on uh, Hoffman here. Uh, again, let's look. Just before we go, let's go back and look at some uh, what kind of a contract they can give him. Um, like I said, Brandon Dupinski is probably off and going to be a UFA next year, so that's coming off. Felino's probably going to take a pay cut next year. Um, Riley Nash, you can bring back, but you don't, but they don't have to. They probably, they have young players that they probably want to see to take that role. I think he's likely done. Uh, Miku Koivu, who knows, maybe bring him back, maybe not, depending on how he does this year. And Gregorenko, of course, is also in that same spot. So I would say they have a lot of uh, movement that they can do. They have a lot of flexibility. So if they really wanted him, they could actually give him more than one year. Um, I could see them giving him like three years. And in this world, cap world, at six million, or maybe even push it up to seven million, uh, that is not a bad contract for a player, and I think that he might put his name on the dotted line for that. Geez, we're getting to 20 minutes here, and we still got one more team to go. So, Nash, let's go to my final one, who I think maybe the most likely. It's actually a tie: Columbus or the Nashville Predators. Uh, the Nashville Predators are have been trying to find offense their whole lives i think <laughs> their whole existence has been trying to find offense um i know they've been trying to trade off a guy like ryan johansson but that just is not going to happen um i talked i've talked about that trade ever since the trade happened i didn't like it when it happened everybody thought i was crazy they needed a center um, it was a hockey trade for position, and I just didn't think Ryan Johansson was going to turn out to be the number one center that a lot of people did, and he didn't. 
Um, Matt Duchesne, they're into that. They need a shooter for Matt Duchesne. They thought Philip Forsberg would be able to play on Duchesne's wing, but the thing is with Philip Forsberg is he likes the puck on his stick. He's not a guy that really is a take a pass and you do a one-timer, which is what Matt Duchesne really needs to work with, is best working with a player like that. Victor Arvison is fine. Um, really, they should have more offense out of this lineup than they do. Um, we'll see how the new coach, Hines, does next year in implementing his system to try to get more offense out of this lineup. But I'm hearing all over the place that they're in on Hoffman. And we know that Poyle isn't one to sit on his hands when it comes to stuff like this. So uh, it wouldn't surprise me at all. Now they have 12 million in cap space left and nobody really decide but Cunning. And they're set up pretty good next year as well. This is a team that doesn't have anybody to sign for three more years. Uh, and not significant players at that all except for Forsberg three years from now. They've got some room here, boys and girls, and they don't have much coming up in the pipe to be able to give them offense. Let's look at the depth chart real quick. You've got Forsberg, Johansson, Arvidsson, uh, then Yarncroc, Duchesne, Cunning. That just doesn't work. Yarncroc for Duchesne, he needs players that can shoot. I like the pickup of Luke Cunning from Minnesota. I don't know what was going on with him there. It did. He he wasn't uh, just something wasn't working out there in Minnesota. And maybe it will work in Nashville. He was a late first round pick and showed some offensive flair. He may work out really well there. You could also put Rocco Grimaldi up there, and I I don't mind that. A good hard working guy. And if you were to get Hoffman. You can bring Yarncrick back here in his third line role where he's supposed to be. And Nick Cousins at this stage of his career is probably better suited here. This screams of a Hoffman pickup as long as Hoffman wouldn't mind going to Nashville. Not only could they give him money, they've got quite a significant amount of money. They could post him seven years. They could give him seven million for four to five years. Uh, they, they, they're they in the position to give them the best contract out of anybody out here. My pick for Hoffman is the Nashville Predators. I, I think that that's where he's likely going to end up going. They're the most desperate for scoring. Uh, I think, well, no, maybe Columbus is as well, but uh, they're in more of a position to pay him what he, need, what he can get paid. And Poyle is known for pulling the trigger like this. Also, He'd be a fantastic player for Duchesne. He can score off a one-timer. He can score off the half boards. He's great uh, with uh, passers. The good thing about Hoffman is he can score any way you want, and that's kind of what they need. So that's my pick, boys and girls. Remember, if you want to see all our free agents, uh, remaining free agent uh, frolic, head over to uh, Sports News or Sports Fanatic News on the YouTube. Maybe I'll put the link down on the bottom. I'll give you the link. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to give you the link in the comments. And go down there and comment, boys and girls. Tell me all about what you think. Where do you think Hoffman's going to go? Or tell me about any other free agents, your team, or anything like that. Until next time, thanks for subscribing and hitting the bell. Have a great day. That's my full 42. Lots of love to you.